and the God and the Son and the Holy Spirit. For us, my brothers and sisters, today we celebrate a couple of feasts in the church. We celebrate today the uh, fathers of the first six ecumenical councils. And today we also celebrate the memory of St. Vladimir of Kiev, the baptizer of Rus. And so today I'd like to contemplate a little bit on St. Vladimir and also on the gospel reader that's associated to, with him today, the gospel of St. John that we just heard. St. Vladimir, we have to know, is a, he is a great prince of Kiev. And at the time that he ruled in Kiev, that there was many warring cities and many tribal, it was very tribal, they were pagan. As we heard in the, in the uh, uh, Kentuckian that he, delivered from, he was delivered from idols. And so he had a lot of different things going on. And he, for the love of his people, wanted to unite them, to unite them. And they all had different beliefs about God being pagan. They had many different ideas of who to worship. And as the chronicles, uh, uh, the Russian chronicle, chronicler Nestor says that St. Vladimir had sent emissaries out to find out what is the true faith, what is the faith that he should unite his people under. Now, we, we rely heavily on this, this uh, chronicle often, but we can't miss the fact that his grandmother, Olga, Olga, the great grand princess, she had committed herself to baptism, to the Orthodox faith. And so this decision, this choice by St. Olga had to have influenced St. Vladimir. There's no, there's no question that her faith influenced her grandson. And so when he chose, we often get this uh, the historical perspective that he chose orthodoxy because of the, he did not like the Latins and the Jews and the Muslims for whatever reason, and he chose orthodoxy and because of their great worship in Agio Sophia. But you see, he never had an experience of conversion, say like Constantine. In the Anagraphy, he's called the second Constantine, who brought Christianity to all their people. He never had like an inner strong conversion. He was making a choice making a choice that was good for him and for his people. He was looking out for them. It was not only after he made that conversion, that the choice to be baptized, that he had a conversion to Christ, that he encountered Christ. But it came first a choice, a choice to go ahead and step forward into a, and to do something that perhaps he was not fully sure of. It was that decision that compelled him to be baptized, and likewise, all his people, all his people under that were under his care and that he ruled over to be baptized as well. And there's often in the back we have a small icon of this scene of people going to the Dnieper River, masses are being baptized and accepting Christ in the Orthodox faith. It was by a decision to do good, to do good for his salvation and also to do good for his people, to unite them under one God, our Lord. And so we have to think about today as decision, that decisions impact us. In our lives, our decisions are what are most important. God has given us free will. He has given us the able to choose in our lives how we direct and live accordingly. And so the most important thing that we can do in our lives is make good decisions. To make good decisions. Decisions to take care of ourselves, our, our physical health. Decisions to uh, take care of our family. And not to make, and you know, our decisions, by the way, affect our family, our loved ones around us, right? We know people who make bad choices make bad choices and it affects their children, it affects family, it affects friends. So our choices are very powerful, brothers and sisters. Our decisions and how we live our lives, very powerful thing. God has given us that power to direct our lives. And that power sometimes affects others around us, either for the good, like we see today in the baptism of the Kievan people through the St. Vladimir's Prayer's decision, or to the bad, if we choose to live our lives apart from God and to live our lives and make poor decisions. It affects people and it affects us. But how do we make good choices, you ask? Is there some kind of, um, I guess, some path that we, we follow in order to make good choices? Choices are difficult. Sometimes we're put in difficult situations. But we know the good ones. We know the easy decisions to make, right? In our lives, if we're raised, most of us were raised in a certain way, but we know what is a good choice. And we'd be surprised how often we don't choose the right way, to choose the right thing. The simple thing about taking care of our health, simple thing about coming to church, going to work, finding something that was fulfillment to ourselves and to be able to fulfill and, and take care of our families. These are easy decisions and so many people don't even make those ones. But for those difficult decisions, those things 
that are, seem like you contemplate and you don't know what to do, there's only really one way to, to know you're making a good choice. And it's to plead to God. It's to plead to Him and supplicate and ask Him to help you, help you to choose, to help you to make a wise decision. And when you make a decision for Him to help you live it out, to see it through to the end, so oftentimes we're faint-hearted and we make decisions and we just kind of let them go, right? Especially when we, we try to set goals in our lives, right? We choose something and it just kind of we let it go. And the Gospel today, and St. John tells us this specifically, it's talking about Christ as the shepherd of his flock and that the people recognize Christ. He calls them by their name and they know his voice. They come in and out for pasture. He takes care of us. But he also, in this Gospel, he talks about people who try to get in from the side gate. People who don't come through Christ to get in to the kingdom of heaven, salvation. He says they come through the side gate. And the Father's saying basically that these people he's referring to are people who put aside the traditions of the church, they put aside the teachings of Christ, and try to steal. They steal the flock and they steal salvation. And we know that you can't trick God. That he sees all, he knows all. And so, brothers and sisters, we're making a decision. We too don't want to be stealing. We don't want to be the ones that steal and try to sub, go around Christ in our decision making. Go around God when we make a choice and try to reason within ourselves, well, this is the best thing for me. Our reason is fallen, brothers and sisters. Just like Adam and Eve fell and we had brought on death and all the sinful things in our world, our reason too is fallen. And we can't trust it all the time. We try to make good choices, but sometimes it tricks us. And so we can't go around Christ when we make choices in our lives. We got to go directly to Him and listen to the teachings of the church, listen to Christ in the scriptures, and above all, listen to Christ in our prayers. As He directs us, He doesn't leave us abandoned. The Holy Spirit is there to guide us. So brothers and sisters, today as we reflect on this great feast of St. Vladimir, and all the things that happened since he made it one choice, one decision to accept the Lord and to bring all his people unto one God to be ruled in a righteous way. And we know that we too, as we hear in the Chopari, that we are his spiritual kin. We in the Russian church are inheritance. We have inherited that choice. That choice has made us who we are today. Whether we like it or not, because of that choice we are here today. So many millennia uh, from that day. So, make good choices, brothers and sisters. Do the good thing, do the right thing, as God has taught us, as your parents have taught you, as we know in the scriptures, follow your conscience. Always let God be your guide whenever we make choices in life, because it will lead you into salvation if you make the right one, and it will affect, for the positive or the negative, all your family, all your friends, and all those in your circle. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.